The customs of some savage nations might perchance be profitably imitated by us, for they at least go through the semblance of casting their sloth annually. And have the idea of the thing, whether they have the reality or not. Would it not be well if it were to celebrate such a busk or feast of first fruits as Bartram describes to have been the custom of the Muklas Indians? When a town celebrates the busk, says he, having provided themselves with new clothes, new pots, pans, and other household utensils and furniture, they collect all their worn-out clothes and other despicable things, sweep and cleanse their house, squares, and the whole town of their filth, which with all the remaining grain and other old provisions they cast together into one common heap and consume it with fire. After having taken medicine and fasted for three days, all the fire in the town is extinguished. During this fast, they abstain from the gratification of every appetite and passion, whatever. A general amnesty is proclaimed. All malefactors may return to their town. On the fourth morning, the high priest, by rubbing dry wood together, produces new fire in the public square, from whence every habitation in town is supplied with a new and pure flame. They then feast on the new corn and fruits and dance and sing for three days. And on the fourth following day, they receive visits and rejoice with their friends from neighboring towns who have in like manner purified and prepared themselves. I have no doubt that they were originally inspired directly from heaven to do thus, though they have no biblical record of the revelation. And I found that by working about six weeks in a year, I could meet all the expenses of living. The whole of my winters, as well as most of my summers, I had free and clear for study. I have thoroughly tried school keeping and found that my expenses were in proportion, or rather out of proportion, to my income. The laborer's day ends with the going down of the sun, and he is then free to devote himself to his chosen pursuit, independent of his labor, but his employer, who speculates from month to month, has no respite from one end of the year to the other. In short, I am convinced, both by faith and experience, that to maintain one's self on this earth is not a hardship, but a pastime. If we will live simply and wisely, as the pursuits of the simpler nations are still the sports of the more artificial. It is by a mathematical point view only that we are wise, as the sailor or the fugitive slave keeps the pole star in his eye. But that is sufficient guidance for all our life. We may not arrive at our port within a calculable period, but we would preserve the true course.